I am David Bowie, a member of Vermont Interfaith Action and of Christ Church Presbyterian. And I'm honored to serve as your Master of Ceremonies tonight. I want to thank College Street Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, for hosting us and for their front of the house tech team of one, down, uh, Ken White. Uh, people tell me that uh, apparently Ken has a side gig of being senior pastor here at the church, uh, but we're grateful for him serving uh, all of us tonight. Speaking of tech, uh, could I ask that you turn your cell phones on to vibrate or off? We have special guests tonight from the state of Vermont, officials to members of three towns who will be sharing their experiences in becoming inclusive towns. And also exciting is the presence of the birthing parents, that's what I call you, the birthing parents of this inclusion movement. We look forward to hearing how this effort began and plans for the future. Martin Luther King reminds us that power is the ability to achieve purpose. And our purpose here tonight is to celebrate inclusion. Inclusion is being seen. Inclusion is being heard. Inclusion is being counted respected in our towns and our workplaces. Inclusion is feeling safe with our neighbors, with town officials who know us and know our differences. And in fact, this is Vermont Inclusion Week all over the state and festivities are happening in different places. But tonight, we recognize towns from across Vermont. Now these are towns in different sizes, different in how they've managed, but one thing they have in common is that they have been willing to look inward before creating their document. Inward at their hiring practices, procedures and activities. Inward through their willingness to help each other manage change that feels like it's happening too quickly and yet at the same time, for its marginalized citizens, is not happening rapidly enough. Each town has developed a statement that welcomes all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity or expression, age, disability, socioeconomic status. 110 towns so far want everyone to feel safe and welcome in their communities. So let's give it up now as we get started. For 110 Vermont towns, their courage, their strength, they're not all here tonight, but let them hear us in our appreciation for what they've done. Before we hear from our guests, Vermont Interfaith Action uses a format for big meetings like this and for smaller volunteer meetings. So let us open with what we call a reflection. Good evening. My name is Mary Beth Barrett, and I'm a member of Christ Church Presbyterian here in Burlington and a leader with Vermont Interfaith Action. And I'd like to share a reflection with you that's written by Sonia Vetra Tinsley, who's an African-American singer, songwriter, and activist from Atlanta. It's called, You Have to Pick Your Team. Every day presents infinite reasons to believe that change can't happen. Infinite reasons to give up. But I always tell myself, Sonia, you have to pick your team. 
It seems to me that there are two teams in the world, and that you can find evidence to support the arguments of both. The trademark of one team is cynicism. They'll tell you why what you're doing doesn't matter, why nothing is going to change, why no matter how hard you work, you're going to fail. They seem to get satisfaction out of explaining how we'll always have injustice. You can't change human nature, they'll say. It's foolish to try. And from their experience, they might be right. But then there's another group of people who admit they don't know how things will turn out, but have decided to work for change. I see Martin Luther King on that team, Alice Walker, Howard Zinn. I see my chaplain from college and my activist friends. They're always telling stories of faith rewarded, of ways things could be different, of how their own lives have changed. They'll give you reasons why you shouldn't give up, testimonials, why we've yet to see our own potential as a species. They believe we're partners in God's creation and that change really is possible. There are times when both teams seem right. Both have evidence. We'll never know who's really going to prevail. So I just have to decide which team seems happier, which side I'd rather be on. And for me, that means choosing on the side of faith. Because on the side of cynicism, even if they're right, who wants to win that argument anyway? If I'm going to stick with somebody, I'd rather stick with people who have a sense of possibility and hope. I just know that's the side I want to be on. And I was going to share another piece, David mentioned that we have things that we do in our meeting, and uh, one of the things we do is share a credential. And a credential just tells you a little bit who we are as the body to faith action. And uh, Pam Lacer from First Unitarian Church was hoping to be here tonight and wasn't able to get here. Uh, so I'm sharing her words, um, <laughs> words from Pam. Vermont Interfaith Action, transforming people, transforming communities. Our mission is to create solutions to systemic issues that present, to prevent our most vulnerable citizens from enjoying a sustained quality of life. Our faith-based coalition of more than 70 members and 70 member and affiliated congregations works for systemic change around issues of social, racial, and economic justice. We are currently working actively in the areas of immigration, corrections reform, racial justice, affordable housing, and homelessness. Our goal is to create the hope, the power, the knowledge, and the political will needed to make compassion and social justice a reality for all Vermonters. We unite, listen, study, engage, and act. Together, we amplify our voices, showing that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. We believe people of faith can affect real systemic change. We believe that a better world is possible. Thank you for coming. It's now time for our honor roll. Good evening. My name is Nancy McClellan, and I'm a member of the First Congregational Church of Burlington and also a member of Vermont Interfaith Action. This evening, we'd like to welcome and recognize those who have come from all of our member congregations. When I call out your faith community, please stand and remain standing. Also, feel free to make a little noise and recognize yourselves. From the Burlington area, Christ Church Presbyterian. Yay! Congregational Church. Our souls in your faith gathering. Unitarian Universalist Society.
Society of Burlington. First Congregational Church of Burlington. meetings in keeping with our model with many parties. 
We had conversations with Taisha Green in Burlington's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office, and with legislators Catherine Sims, Charlie Kimball, Brian Sheena, and Tom Stevens. We met with Susanna Davis and Jay Green of the State Office of Racial Equality, Racial Equity, and with Weiwei Wang, the founder of Vermont Professionals of Color Network, as well as with representatives from Vermont Businesses for Social Responsibility and a Black Entrepreneurs Group. And perhaps most importantly, VIA launched our largest statewide campaign ever in partnership with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. We campaigned to get Prop 2 passed last fall to set the foundation for tackling systemic racism by abolishing slavery without exception in the state constitution, which resulted in 81.5% of the state's voters voting in favor of this amendment. in accordance with our faith values, VIA leaders and staff realized that our work dovetailed nicely with a new initiative started by a team of individuals in the Rutland area. Among them was a man named Bob Harnish. Bob is a longtime resident of Pittsburgh. Retired now, he owned and managed an inn in Menden for many years, so he knows something about hospitality. Bob and his wife also consider as part of their family a Puerto Rican boy and two mom children. Those relationships made clear to Bob both the struggles faced by many non-white people in this country and this state and the many benefits of diversity, both economic and cultural. Bob got the idea for the Declaration of Inclusion from one of his cousins who was the chair of the select board in the town of Franklin. That municipality was the first to adopt the DOI. Bob was excited about this and decided to take it to the select board in his hometown. After some discussion, Pittsburgh adopted a declaration in November 2020. In the next month, Bob took the declaration to Brandon, a neighboring town, and they passed it as well. As this was happening, Bob recruited a friend of his, Al Wakefield of Menden. Al recruited Norman Cohen of Rutland. Their work spread to other key people and to other towns. Since the start of this initiative in the fall of 2020, the Vermont State Chamber of Commerce has become an important partner, and the Vermont League of Cities and Towns created the Municipal Equity Toolkit to provide practical ideas. In addition, Governor Phil Scott first proclaimed the second week of May as Inclusion Week in 2021. Vermont Interfaith Action staff organizer in the Brattleboro area energetically brought the declaration to our volunteers there, and they have made great progress in persuading towns in that area to sign on. The BIA leaders in the Economic Opportunities Organizing Committee have employed the strategy of contacting faith communities in the municipalities that Bob, Al, and Norman are targeting and asking them to take the idea to their elected officials on select boards and city councils. On their own and through these partnerships, this gang of three, which I understand is now a gang of four with a new member, has made the remarkable accomplishment of signing 110 of Vermont's 246 municipalities to the Declaration of Inclusion. These cities and towns represent 65.8% of Vermont's population. Here is the simple assertion of the DOI. The town named herein condemns racism and welcomes all persons regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity or expression, age, disability, or socioeconomic status, and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community. 
As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all of its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect this commitment. The town has been and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. This affirmative declaration is an important first step in making Vermont the most inclusive state in the Union, a tall order for a state that is 96% white. But it can be done if together we are all willing to take the additional steps necessary to make inclusion a reality through concrete, practical measures. For ideas on what these measures might look like, we are grateful to the IDEAL program sponsored by the Office of Racial Equity. IDEAL stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, Action, and Leadership. The IDEAL program's first group launched in early 2023 with 18 towns now participating. In addition, we commend the cohort program initiated by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The IDEAL program and the League's program coordinated their development with each program structured a little differently, but focusing on many of the same issues and topics. At the same time, the Vermont Community Education, pardon me, the Vermont Community Foundation announced a new initiative, its Equitable and Inclusive Communities Grant Program. This program will provide grants up to $10,000 to towns to help them with programming they develop to help build a more inclusive community. Later tonight, you will hear from a few of the municipalities that have begun taking practical steps toward the kind of systemic change that will make true inclusion a reality. Much has been accomplished, and much is still left to do. Tonight, we celebrate our joint achievements, thank those who have made them possible, and dream together of a better future for the state we all love. For Vermont to thrive, we must support one another in the midst of our differences and draw on the strengths and gifts of everyone to build an economy and a society in which we can take pride. Friends, diversity is a fact. Equity is a choice requiring great intention and resolution. Inclusion is action, actually many acts, by many people, day in and day out. The outcome of that good work is belonging. And with a greater sense of belonging within our communities, Vermont becomes more of what we want it to be, more caring, more just, and more livable for all. May it be so. We will be acknowledging all 110 towns in five different readings. This first reading is from towns most recently adopted, and then we will be going back in time. Hopefully it will be on your screen as well. Cavendish, Rockingham, Bellows Falls, Saxton's River, Glover, Weybridge, Duxbury, Northfield, Jamaica, Marshfield, Berlin, Weston, Dover, Granby, Dan Dandy, excuse me, Sunderland, Montpelier, Roxbury, Swanton Village, Williston, Shaftesbury, Jericho, Orwell. Now, for those who took the time to be with us tonight and are representing one of these towns, we have a gift that you can display in your town office. It's meant to be a small replica of a welcome mat. Is it on the screen at all? Okay, excellent. Uh, it, it will be great on mud season, though it won't wipe very much off. 
So after every reading of the honor roll, we'll ask reps from any of the towns we've just named to come forward or to indicate themselves on Zoom to receive this special gift. The mat, the welcome mat says, everyone is welcome here. This municipality adopted the Vermont Declaration of Inclusion by May 2023. The Office of Racial Equity. So is there a here for me? Excellent idea, yes. Do we have any reps from those towns I've just mentioned? I get to keep this one. All right. But, but somebody in the Zoom, okay. Uh, the Office of Racial Equity was established by Governor Scott in 2019. Ms. Susanna Davis has been in this role since the office inception for almost four years now. And the office has expanded into a small, skilled staff in response to calls for more action and solution-oriented dialogue on issues of justice and equity. Her office works with local, state, federal, and nonprofit partners to advance equity in all areas of Vermont life. Now, this is the first time that many of us have met Ms. Davis other than on Zoom, uh, so please welcome Ms. Susanna Davis. Shoulders of people 
who have benefited tacitly or otherwise from our not being included. We've agreed, we the self-selecting group who are here in this room or in this virtual room have agreed that the time has long passed to do this work and to do it here in Vermont. The second widest state in the nation, the second oldest state in the nation, the state with the, if not close to, the lowest birth rate in the country, the state that has a whole lot of per capita statistical superlatives, because as it was recently put to me, we have no capita. <laughs> <laughs> Vermont is a leader in a lot of ways. There are a few ways in which Vermont lags our neighbors around the country. This doesn't have to be one of them. You don't have to have a lot of melanin in the room to do right by melanin. You don't have to have a lot of people in our midst in order to set up systems and policies that support those people whenever they are, wherever they are, and whenever they get here. It means things like broader policies, the unsexy stuff that has to get done behind the scenes, the very, very frustrating and sometimes rewarding work of legislating and judicial decisions and sitting in cramped conference rooms with colleagues you're not really that friendly with but who have a shared vision and who want to get something done. And yes, it also includes joy. It's often the case that when people talk to me about my work, they're, they're, they're somber, sepulchral even. It's my expensive word for the <laughs> There's a lot about which to be upset. There's a lot about which to be fearful or angry. I have a lot of rage. I find ways to channel it. And yet it doesn't all have to be the rage. Well, not all, but you know what I mean. It doesn't all have to be anger and sadness all the time. Yes, there's work to do. Yes, there's pain. And let's hold that pain. Let's hold each other in and through that pain. But also, let's not forget to celebrate the very people we want to <coughs> Because if I'm so caught up saying I want to see Latinos represented in blah blah spaces and spending all my time day and night doing that, when do I ever just get to hang out and be Latina? You've got to make time for proactive joy. This work is not for our lifetimes. But that doesn't mean that we can't also simultaneously have lives during our lifetimes. But in order to do that, there's got to be a place where we can be and feel included. And again, that is an action word, which means I'm doing my part on things like policy. I'm sitting in that uncomfortable chair in that cramped conference room. But I'm also waiting on you. I need you to come with it. I need you to join what a lot of us have been asking you to join for ever. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of um, a quote that I recently read where the speaker says, I can't promise you that it's all going to be okay, but I can promise you that there are a lot of powerful people who want nothing more than for you to give up entirely. But because this is the US, we are defiant and rebellious and we're having none of it, so we shall not give up entirely because that's what they want. Instead, <laughs> instead we're going to do a lot of learning and a lot of listening and a lot of teaching, yes, but we are also going to lift as we climb. We're going to get through that door and then we're going to hold it open for the next person. We're going to do this work non-resentfully toward each other. If we have shared goals, if we have shared vision, let's share in the share. I think that's really what brings us closer to notions of things like inclusion. 
I was grateful to the Declaration of Inclusion organizers for their bravery in doing this work. I, too, have heard the stories of their visits to various communities and how some of the conversations in the towns that you'll see on the screen went pretty well, and others not so much. It is nice that we can be here and celebrate with one another, but just as it's not all, all rage, it is also not all celebration. We have to protect ourselves, and we have to protect each other. Each of us has the capacity to do that, just in a unique way. So I encourage you to join me as we go through the rest of tonight's program to think about the different ways in which we are or are not protecting one another and doing the work of inclusion. It is absolutely everybody's job. I just get to be the one who gets paid for it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's less about the individual triumphs, the successes. It's less about who scored points on the board. It's even less about the board itself and more about the game. Who's in it? Who's not? Who watches from the sidelines? And by the end of it, the king and the pawn both go back into the same box as they say. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Susanna. Our next speaker is from the community organization Mobile. He simply can't help himself. And all of us gathered here tonight are grateful for his genetic learning. Indeed, all of Vermont. Please welcome Vermont's Lieutenant Governor, David Zuckerman. Gender, skin, clothing, etc. 
so that when the conversations happen in our communities, the conversations are inclusive, right? Diversity and inclusion is making sure people are at the table so that as those decisions are made, they are not made in a vacuum. I wish I had been here for more of your speech because I always learn when Susanna speaks and I've also called Susanna for counsel uh, because of your thought process, um, your, your willingness to hear the mistakes that some of us make and teach us how to be better. Um, but it's also, well, it's your job. You've also got a tremendous burden because there are many of us that call and ask you uh, for that information, for that guidance. Um, and I know that it's also really important for many of us who are asking these questions to be conscious that because we are one of the least diverse states in the country, that those whom we ask how to do better are also being asked that by so many of us, uh, or in some ways I hope by so many of us, if the state is really changed to move forward. But that's also a burden. And so we also need to be cognizant of that and make sure when we're asking these questions or asking for advice that that person wants to be, be asked that in the moment. Maybe they also want to break. So make sure we are um, cognizant in that regard. Uh, so I just come as someone who uh, is hopefully going to be able to help amplify the work that you're doing at the town levels, in the community levels, um, and offer one thing that I'm trying to do in the Lieutenant Governor's office, which will be, in the next few days, putting a bookshelf outside my office uh, in the State House with a number of books that in some parts of the country, school systems or towns or town libraries, or even statewide, they are books that are now being said cannot be in our schools, cannot be in our education. Sort of the exact opposite of what we are talking about here in terms of not only looking forward to what we can do better, but also looking to our past to understand what has been done wrong and what people face. And so there will be a bookshelf of banned books that are books worth reading around a range of different diversity and equity issues, gender, race, etc. And my goal my goal this summer is to go to a number of libraries. I don't know how many I will be able to do and how many will be able to schedule and so forth but throughout the state. So if there are some of you that feel like there's a good regional library or town hall where we could have a book reading and or some folks that would like to join me in reading some of these books or segments from these books to make sure we can, in Vermont, show a very different message to other states as well as within our own state that these books are critical and our history is critical, and our future is critical, and they're tied to this literacy and this education. And hopefully through the various techniques and efforts that you're doing at your town levels, through what we can do at the state level, through what Susanna can do through her office, and so many others in this room are doing, we will continue to break down these walls that have been built up over decades and centuries towards that community that I think everyone in this room wants to see, where everyone feels equal at the table and has a true equal opportunity to be successful for themselves and their families. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I appreciate the work you're all doing, and I look forward to working with you going forward. Thank you so much.
We'll continue with our honor roll. Um, trying to do what Susanna suggests. These are the towns that uh, have tried to turn diversity and inclusion into verbs rather than men. Um, so this group includes Cavendish, Washington, Sharon, Williamstown, Chester, East Montpelier, Thetford, Hinesburg, Walcott, Plainfield, Vernon, St. Albans City, St. Johnsbury, Plymouth, Londonderry, Grand Isle, Brookline, Colchester, Isle Mont, Wilmington, Guilford, and Bethel. And if any are here representing those towns tonight and would want to come down and uh, receive your gift of the little welcome mat, we invite you to come down now. And those of you on the screen, just give a wave and, and, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we recognize you as well. Thank you. You know, sometimes a movement has begun so far back in time in the history books, if those history books are still around. But I am pleased to introduce you to someone very much alive, not yet in the history books, co-founder Bob Harnish and Barbara Noyes Pulling, a member of the Gang of Four, as they now call themselves. Please welcome Bob Harnish, followed by Barbara Noyes Pulling, on Zoom. Yeah. Well, thank, well, thank you. Uh, well, what does it mean that 100 towns have adopted the Declaration of Inclusion? It means that the select boards in those 100 towns, now 110, have placed the subject of diversity, equity, and inclusion on their agenda at a meeting, that they read the material we sent and listened to our presentation. And then they discussed what it means to be a more inclusive and diverse town, a more welcoming town, a town that condemns racism in all its forms. And ultimately, they voted to adopt a statement or a declaration that their town commits to being open, welcoming, and inclusive. But today is a day of celebration. And we especially want to thank our valuable allies. Without them, we would not be having this evening event. First, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, mentioned earlier, and respected by every town in Vermont. VLCT, as it's known, and its chief, Ted Brady, and also Karen Horn, gave us immediate recognition and gravitas around the state. And then their valuable toolkit for implementation which is available <clears throat> to every town. And then it was Betsy Bishop at the Vermont Chamber of Commerce, who not only endorsed the concept of inclusion as important for Vermont, but insisted that we should have a website <coughs> and then loaned us one of her key employees, Hazel Brewster, to make it happen. The website and Hazel have proven to be absolutely essential to our success and our credibility and our progress. Going back to early days, Governor Scott and his staff helped enormously by issuing a proclamation of inclusion, giving historical context and stating the importance to Vermont, and then naming this second week of May as Inclusion Week. 
We also thank Coach Kevin Christie of the Social Equity Caucus of the Vermont House, whose weekly meetings helps to keep our cause in the minds of state representatives. In addition, we thank the Rutland NAACP and Mia Schultz for their guidance and encouragement. We must also recognize the town of Franklin, as mentioned earlier, the first, the first town in Vermont, and Dave, to, to adopt a declaration of inclusion, and Dave Benyon, its select board chair, and their select board for being the first towns to adopt a declaration. That select board That select board had the vision to see that in an increasingly violent world, each town must do its part through its citizens to promote ex acceptance and encouragement of diversity. And to recognize that, and that we all have unconscious biases which need to be recognized. And last but certainly not least, we recognize those folks who are putting on this celebration tonight, the Vermont Interfaith Action, and its CEO, Deb Ingram, and also Dave Bodie, Mike Maricki, Frank Sadowski, and many others who are throwing the celebration tonight. They have helped us with presentations in numerous towns, especially in the southeast quadrant of Vermont. It is organizations like this and others I have mentioned that have truly given the Inclusion and Diversity Initiative the wings to fly statewide. And personally, I just want to thank my own team, I shouldn't say my team, our team uh, of Al Wakefield, Norman Cohen. Introduction to the DOI video. 
We're doing that with the Rutland, uh, Rutland Public Access Channel, it's called Peg TV. It will air the video and then post it to YouTube for us to allow towns to watch it before their meetings or during their meetings. And uh, we're hoping to create some podcasts to, uh, to help explain our initiative and share stories of how uh, it's been played out across the state. So uh, along this journey, as it continues, there will be an even greater need uh, for local champions. So we welcome any suggestions you have. We'll also make sure that you have the recorded materials when they're available so that you can share um, with your groups and your communities. The future also means implementation. Um, it is expected with the Declaration of Initiative of Inclusion. We believe making citizens aware of the Declaration is important to the town's uh, success in achieving its aspirations with the Declaration. But there are various forms implementation can take, and it can be done at low or no cost. We have a pretty comprehensive implementation guide on our website, and that's VTE Declaration of Vermont.org. VLCT has created a, a toolkit and heard a little bit about that. Uh, the Vermont Office of Racial Equality has established a program, the Ideal Program, to help local leaders. And the Vermont Community Foundation has a fund uh, with grants that are available to implement the ideal program and, and implement the OI. So there are like three different types of implementation. Um, quick and easy, these are small steps to inform your residents of the DOI and the reasons for adopting it. Um, you can add the declaration to your town website, your town plan, or frame it and put it up in a wall at the town clerk's office. You could print it in the town newsletter, perhaps the first series of articles, and uh, you can include it in the annual report. There's also in-depth uh, implementation. These steps require more thought and at time. You can form a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee to review the town's um, policies, programs, ordinances, and procedures. Uh, be sure that they are free and implicit or institutional bias and report back to the select board. You can assess the current work environment for town employees. Do they feel safe, welcome, and appreciated? You can review economic development, recruitment, and employment practices to ensure they are welcoming, supportive, and reaffirming of your commitment. You can arrange for implicit bias training for staff, and brainstorm with other adopting towns on creative ways to reach out to marginalized groups or individuals that move alive. And you can also, um, we came up with this idea that urge local schools, nonprofits, corporations, in their area to adopt the statement of the national bias training. And then there's ongoing implementation. This is where you can engage partners now and going forward. Work with school administrators to bring inclusion and diversity in the classroom to art, poetry, drama, debate, debate clubs. Work with faith leaders to guide their congregations to embrace diversity. Engage the town's library director to arrange a speaker series, discussion groups, reading groups, film series and include students in these programs. Also, you could create a concierge service to assist new people in town and those considering a move to the town and offer them ideas for housing, contacts, and meeting other needs that they might have. So all of this is on our website. Um, this is our game plan. We're in it for a, a long game. And um, expect to see a, a gang of four um, in a town near you in the coming months. Thank you very much.
Barbara, you don't have to stand up, but to stay visible for a minute. I just want Bob, who we've already uh, recognized and heard from, to stand, please. Norm Cohen, would you stand? And Al Wakefield, would you please stand? Never doubt the difference that one person can make, or two, or three, or four. <laughs> Let's hear from another batch of talents on the honor roll. Uh, to continue the honor roll tonight, Bradford, Hyde Park, Park, Swan, Powell, Virgins, South Burlington. Underhill, Faston, Johnson Village, Johnson, Cambridge, Athens, Stratford, Poultney, Ludlow, Sudbury, Clarendon, Essex Junction Village, West Windsor, <coughs> Bakersfield, and Winooski. And again, if you are representing uh, one of your towns here, please come forward to receive a gift. Board adopt a resolution proclaiming December 10th as Human Rights Day. 
It has been recognized every year since its inception. We created a civil flag display in our local park and formed a police advisory committee in 2020. The adoption of the Declaration of Inclusion in 21 was just the roadmap we needed to stay focused on why we were doing these things. Since the adoption of the Declaration, we organized a community discussion on belonging in Milton in conjunction with the Vermont Council on Rural Development and the Milton on the Move initiative. We now, as we just heard, hosted our second inclusion festival. Both were well attended by more than 500 people. We have updated our town policies, administrative codes for pronoun usage and inclusivity. In addition, as of January 23, we added a stipend position for our town planner to become our diversity, equity, and inclusivity director. As my goal is that we need to have in town planning all initiatives, the town comprehensive plan and all, to be viewed through the lens of DEI when they're being developed for future generations. We know that this work is hard, so everybody doesn't agree with it, but we have to go forward and we have to work together. I am very understanding when people challenge why we are doing things. But as I stand here today knowing that not everyone in our community understands or even accepts the amount of attention I have focused in this area, I know it's important. I see you here tonight. I see the people around the state working on it, and I see the Fab Four here doing their part. We must continue to do this work so all of our residents feel that they belong in our community in this state. Thank you. We're rounding the horn here for uh, inclusive towns. Let's have another reading. Dorset, Putney, Wallingford, Berry City, Stowe, New Fane, Morristown, Burlington, Fairhaven, Shelburne, Waitsfield, Chittenden, Mount Tabor, Fairfax, Hardwick, Hartford, Waterbury, Springfield, Proctor, Windsor, Warren, Richmond. If you are representing your town, please come forward to get your gift or raise your hand on Zoom to be recognized. specifically as it applies to race in our community. 
um, as part of the petition, we asked the select board to form a town appointment committee and an equity recruitment committee that would have the task of um, one, understanding, documenting, and remedying issues of inequality in our community, two, increasing, increasing the civic engagement of marginalized people in our town by being more inclusive, and three, educating and training select board members, school board members, and committee members on methods for equity and inclusion in their respective roles. Since the formation of the Bethel Equity and Inclusion Committee, we have increased access to town government by instituting hybrid select board meetings, brought our town constable into compliance with the state mandated, state mandated race data and traffic stops, which they were not doing, um, engaged select board members in deep conversation about topics such as colorblindness, and facilitated trainings and other educational opportunities, some as part of Bethel University, a community-led level of courses. Um, we are still working and there's more exciting things to come out of the um, EIC. Our committee was not universally welcomed by select board members or by the community, um, and part of what we wanted to do at our founding was to create um, a bold, unapologetic town commitment to equity of all kinds um, at all levels of government. Um, when a community member told us about the Declaration of Inclusion, we were grateful to learn that there was already a template to achieve that town commitment and that there were other towns that we could point to that were modeling what this unapologetic commitment looks like. Because of some of the hesitation toward our work, we first approached our town planning commission um, to ask for their support of the declaration as part of our town planning process. Um, Bob attended this meeting and helped us explain the purpose of the declaration and how it connects to town planning. With the commission's unanimous support, we then went to the select board uh, with Bob and Al, and the declaration passed unanimously on September 26th of 2022. Um, this declaration has led us to grant funding with the um, Vermont Community Foundation grants of the Equitable and Inclusive Communities. Um, this will allow us to grow our community education work and we're very excited. Um, upcoming with the support of the Bethel Public Library, we're starting a book club that starts later this month. We are hosting town conversations, we're hosting a Bethel Juneteenth celebration, Bethel's um, second annual Pride um, Festival the June 23rd, 24th, 25th. And um, also after school programs for BIPOC, transgender, and non-binary people. The declaration has reached into our school district to improve its equity commitments and was read aloud at the beginning of our town meeting by the town mother. So we are very uh, grateful to be among y'all who are doing this work. I'm happy to chat with anybody about the continuing work we're doing in Bethel and um, looking forward to, to more conversation and more action as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. If we had a drum corps with us tonight, it would roll now. Some towns took much longer to understand the implications of being an inclusive town. Others were waiting for something like this to find them. So it is my honor to read the earliest list of Vermont towns, having seriously examined and declaring themselves inclusive. On your screen, Franklin, the very first town, it keeps coming up. South Hero, Milton, Moortown, Middlebury, Brandon, Pittsburgh, West Rutland, Paulette, Randolph, Pittsfield, Village of Woodstock, Town of Woodstock, Tidmouth, Milltown Springs, Rutland Center, Shrewsbury, Menden, Rutland Town, Bristol, and Bennington. Our inclusive team has also encouraged organizations 
in addition to municipalities, to adopt the declaration if they so choose. We would like to recognize them as well. Lamoille County Regional Planning Commission, Northwest Regional Planning Commission, Brattleboro Area Chamber of Commerce, Guilford Community Church, United Church of Christ, Mount Escutney School District, Brattleboro Developmental Development or Co uh, Co Co Corporation, Rutland Young Professionals, Rutland Area NAACP, Rutland League of Cities and Towns, excuse me, Vermont uh, League of Cities and Towns, Vermont Chamber of Commerce, Vermont Social Equity Caucus, Burton Snowboards, Inc., Rutland Regional Planning Commission, the Queechee Club, First Baptist Church of Burlington, Christ Church Presbyterian Burlington, the Edgar May Health and Recreation Center in Springfield. And once again, are there any reps from these towns or organizations just named who would step forward? Yes. themselves within the community. And then 
to how to make the city um, operations more equitable and just. And then we went and implemented some of those recommendations from the study. We're still working on that. But uh, just to mention one in particular, including a pilot project of making available stipends for members of city committees to offset financial barriers to participate in the committee meetings. Those are opt in, and the um, information about who receives those is totally confidential. CJAC members agreed from the start of our study of the DOI that our city's statement should not only conform with the template provided by the DOI organization, but also reflect the character and needs of our community. We invited Al Wakefield of the DOI organization to a committee meeting to discuss the goals, timetable, and process of adapting and adopting the statement for Montpelier. We then worked on writing and presenting a draft of the statement to the Montpelier City Council that affirms the need for operational, relational, structural challenges to accomplish the goal of inclusion and further develops and articulates the goals of an ongoing equity plan and vision for Montpelier. I should add to this that at the same time that we were and I were moving forward with this uh, assessment and planning for the future, the city also had a police review committee uh, on which I was privileged to serve. Um, and we shared information from the study that they were doing that, um, that was being done them with our own study um, to try to coordinate recommendations that we had and observations that we were making and making and hearing from the, the members of our community. So we really captured a lot of very important information and, the, and, uh, and, and that we were able to use that in making some of our own plans for going forward. We're anticipating several changes in the membership of the city council in March, CJAC decided to wait until the new council was elected and seated to ensure full discussion and awareness with the new council members. We set up a draft of the council on March 15, 2023, in preparation for their discussion and action at its meeting on March 22nd. At that meeting, there was a final revision that was proposed by the council, acknowledging that we as a community have much more work to do, and then that, that version was adopted by a unanimous vote. Adopting the declaration of inclusion is a useful step to move the city of Montpelier towards becoming the welcoming community and part of the welcoming state that we know we can be. Adopting this declaration is in line with our work to ensure the well-being and security of all, condemn racism and discrimination, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and strive to ensure that our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect that commitment. Thank you.
110 towns, that's pretty impressive. That's worthy of the celebration we're holding. The question that I have for you is, are we going to rest on our laurels? Are we going to be satisfied? Are we going to stop here? No. I can almost hear you. Let's try that again. Are we going to stop here? No. How many towns will we have signed the Declaration of Inclusion? All of them. So we, those towns that have already committed to the Declaration will form the impetus for other towns to join in as well. And as members of the Vermont Interfaith Action, to achieve this, we must keep social justice high on our list of priorities. It's important that we reach out to others to engage in the effort. And most important of all, let us all come together to address systemic racism. Now, we heard from Barbara earlier about the strategy to get all cities and towns signed on to the Declaration. I'd just like to suggest one other element that will help us cross that finish line. And it comes to us from the first century of the Common Era. It comes to us from a gentleman named Barnabas. Barnabas lived in Jerusalem. He was Jewish and he became a part of that first century Christian community. Now it's interesting to note that his name, Barnabas, means son of encouragement. And he came to be known by his name because he lived it out. He was known in a community for being a person who supported, a person who encouraged. It sounds like much of the work that the Fab Four has been doing. Encouragement and support, nudging people forward to achieve what they can. His name means sons of encouragement. He was a reliable and constant supporter within the community. So this evening, our charge is to become daughters and sons of encouragement encouraging each other in this work, and also encouraging the remainder of the cities and towns to become signers of the Declaration of Inclusion. And may the power of the divine empower us to make it so. Please go to our website or speak with anyone here with a name tag and also the website for Vermont Declaration of Inclusion. For Vermont Interfaith Action folks who uh, were involved in the planning or implementation tonight, we have a brief evaluation session uh, immediately following. We're going to meet in this corner. Please join us uh, in person if you're here. and. Uh, follow us on Zoom, stay on Zoom if you are one of those. I want to thank our speakers uh, who are in person and on Zoom for sharing your town's experience and your personal experience and your hopes for the future. To all of us, if you feel alone in this work, look around the room. Look at our Zoom mates. You are not alone. No one is coming here to save us. Not Susanna, not David Zuckerman, 
not even Al, Norm, Bob, or Bart, but we're the ones that we've been waiting for. So thank you for attending. Please drive home safely, and God bless.